Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be finishing up my review of the Lethal Gaming Gear Neptune mouse pad. Now this is going to be a deep dive into the Neptune and how it performs, how it held out over testing and a lot of other stuff we're going to cover in this video today. Now before we get into it, I did want to say a big thank you to Lethal Gaming Gear for sending this out for me to take a look at. I greatly appreciate it. As always, well, the products you see here on the channel, regardless of a free or discounted unit, I will always remain unbiased to get the truth about everything you see here on the channel, regardless of any other external factors. As always, this video will be fully subtitled and I will have timestamps available down in the video description. Description. All right, but let's go ahead and get right into part two of my review of the Lethal Gaming Gear Neptune. Since I haven't really used too many speed pads in my time and I normally prefer hybrid pads, the Neptune definitely was a bit of a weird one for me, but it actually did impress me for quite a few reasons, which I'm going to talk about later in this video. But I will say because the Neptune is a speed pad and just because I'm coming from the Infinity My Shogun and Control V2, which are very controlled pads, this pad did definitely take me a week or two to get used to. I did also have to adjust my centimeter per 360 from 40 to 60 centimeter to account from the speed just because it was a little too fast for me at first. So once I got used to the pad and I did kind of adjust my sensitivity to help me kind of ease into the pad. The pad did actually perform extremely well. I'm actually very, very impressed with this pad. I honestly didn't really expect to like a speed pad because again, I much prefer the more hybrid control-esque pads, but this pad actually really, really surprised me. It did feel pretty good for Valorant. I mean, flicking performance was a little iffy just because again, I'm very bad on speed pads, but tracking performance was what this pad really shined in. In my opinion, it performed exceptionally well for tracking just because it's such a smooth, speedy glide on the pad. It did feel really good for that. So while it's not the greatest pad for Valorant and that kind of stuff, it did feel a lot better for bad business, Overwatch, Fortnite, like more dynamic aiming games, which I believe is what this pad's more optimized for anyways, because again, do you really want to be using a speed pad for Valorant where it's very precise? Probably not. But overall, the pad did really surprise me. Again, this is a very unique pad. It does have a lot of aspects that make it a lot different from a lot of other speed pads I've used. So it's a very good pad, did perform very well. The Neptune just has its own kind of quirks that make it a very, very unique speed pad. And the thing that made the Neptune so quirky, for lack of a better word, against all the other speed pads I've used is the very unique softness of this mouse pad. So let's talk about that next. Now, one really unique thing about the Neptune is that it has a lot of springiness to the surface. The GSR2 and the Shogun pads do have this, but this one is really uniquely balanced. Maybe it's more of a surface tension thing, but this pad's really balanced where despite you using dot skates or other kinds of skates, you can push into the pad to get a little more control, but the pad fights your force enough where you can't push it so deep where the base of your mouse rubs against the pad, which is really, really odd. Traditionally on softer pads like the Infinity Mice pads, I ran into issues where dot skates couldn't really compensate for the depth of the pad and what would happen is I would push the mouse pad in to get a little more control and my base of my mouse would rub up against the surface and that really didn't happen here because I guess the surface tension or just the springiness of the Neptune kind of prevented me from doing that so it's a very unique feeling pad in terms of its softness again the entire concept of a, of a speed pad being soft is very strange because you'd expect the speed pad to be hard and speedy where this pad is speedy but it has a very unique angle of being quite soft as well which is very 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 odd now obviously the softness of the Neptune does obviously have some factors in terms of how it's going to perform during use with different grip styles and different hand weights and that kind of stuff. So I'll talk about that in a minute, but let's first talk about the surfacing of the Neptune because that's a very important topic we have to cover as well. Alrighty, now the surface of the Neptune is very unique. Now this is a polyester surface and according to Lisa Gaming Gear, this is actually a micro textured surface. So when you do rub your mouse pad across the surface, there is going to be a little bit of feedback, which is actually nice to see. Now the surface stitching of the Neptune is very similar to the surface stitching we found on one of my favorite pads of all time, the Focus Ambition, which is a hybrid pad. Comparing them under the microscope, you can see that the Neptune stitching and the Focus Ambition stitching are very similar. However, the Neptune stitching is more randomized. It kind of looks like a gigantic game of Tetris to zoom super far out. On top of that, the surfacing of the Neptune is much smoother than it is on the Focus Ambition. But again, the Focus Ambition is a hybrid pad. This is a pure speed pad. So that is to be expected. Now, because of the super smooth randomized surface stitching on the Neptune, the Neptune does feel very fast. But of course, as I mentioned before, because of this micro texturing, it does have a little bit of feedback from the pad. So a little bit of added control, meaning that static and dynamic friction will be very light, of course, depending on your grip weight and that kind of stuff. Stopping power can be slightly high just due to this micro texturing of the surface and the softness, but that'll also heavily depend on your grip weight. All right, now, just as I mentioned before, since you can push your mouse into the mouse pad to kind of get a little bit of extra control, this does, of course, change how it feels with different grip styles. Now, I will say the range of control or the control variability you feel in the Neptune is significantly less than every other pad I've tried. Again, I've tried it on more control focus pads like the GSR2 and the Infinity Mice Control V2 and Shogun. So it's not the control side of the factor. You do get a little bit more control but it's the smallest range out of every single pad I've tried. Very, very heavy grips like palm grips or a really heavy claw grip can have some inconsistencies where the pad does feel a little more controlled. Again, I would say 
brings it to like maybe one eighth of a hybrid pad and it's still a speed pad at the end of the day, but you do get a little more control pushing super far into it. With claw grips and fingertip grips, of course, it's going to feel the fastest because you're not pushing into the surface nearly as much. The Neptune still feels like a speed pad pretty much no matter how much pressure you're putting on top of it. There is just a very, very small range of how much extra control you can get on some grip styles depending on your grip weight. Alrighty, now while we're talking about the Neptune softness, I did want to talk about skate compatibility. Now I've just seen with previous pads, with specifically softer pads, sometimes skates can have issues as I mentioned before, where the skates can't account for the depth of the pad, which causes you to rub the base of your mouse against the surface of the pad. Now, as I mentioned before, the Neptune widely avoids this despite it being three millimeters thick, but some mouse skates do cause some problems. So across the board, stock skates were for the most part completely fine. Primarily for testing us, I kind of gauged off of my Zowie U2 stocks and the stock speed skates on my Sora V2 here. Both of those had no issues, regardless of how far I pressed them into the pad. I didn't really feel the base of the mouse scraping against the top, which is good to see. Donut skates were also quite good just because again, they are a larger surface area they don't go as deep into the pad so they were completely fine dots were a bit of a different situation though sometimes dots were good and sometimes dots were bad on heavier grips like palm and claw grip dots were sometimes a problem because because they would go a little too deep again depending on your hand weight i have really big hands so i do have a heavier grip so i did find that on dot skates the back more palm area of my hand would kind of dig into the pad a little more than the top would which did cause some small inconsistencies but on lighter grips like a lighter claw or fingertip claw or just pure fingertip i had no issues with dot skates now keep in mind for the dot testing i did here i did primarily four to eight dots for testing so if you have more dots this may not necessarily be a problem so just keep that in mind if you're looking into the neptune some skates may not play too nice with the surface of the neptune so just keep that in mind Alrighty. now one other thing i want to talk about with the neptune is the effects of humidity and moisture now this pad actually surprised me quite a bit because this is actually very similar to the gsr2 and how it handles moisture absorption so what it does is that water absorbs very quickly into the pad itself not as fast as the gsr2 does of course but it is relatively fast but it does actually sink into the surface of the pad. It actually does go below the surface layer. So the top layer of the pad actually remains largely unaffected from moisture. Now I did do testing with just doing dots across the pad. I did also dump like a bunch of water on the mouse pad and just ran it through my shower and then tried to play on it and see if it would feel different. And surprisingly, the surface actually felt very consistent. Of course, if it's like logged with water, it will be a little different, but humidity and that kind of stuff is not going to be a problem on this mouse pad, which is nice to see because it is very absorptive. Now I did want to know here that the water that from the surface of the pad does not go through the rubber base of the pad which is quite surprising because the base is quite aerated which kind of gives it this like softness and springiness you, that we talked about earlier so while the mouse pad is very absorptive to water it doesn't go through the bottom which is quite interesting which isn't really something i expected so if you're in a high humidity environment this is a great pad if you're looking for speed because this is going to be largely unaffected by water over my testing despite my three cats being in my office constantly the neptune is actually surprisingly resistant to cat hair there was the occasional time where one piece of cat hair would kind of get stuck in the surface stitching but it was not that big of an issue for the most part cat hair kind of rested against the top and you could just wipe it off with your hand or a microfiber cloth. Crumbs didn't really particularly stick into the pad either just because the surfacing is very dense and it's very randomized. So I didn't really have any issues with that either. So overall, the pad is largely resistant to dust and cat hair and that kind of stuff. Now, overall, the build quality of the Neptune is very, very solid. The surface stitching is consistent across the entire pad. There are no uneven areas or any areas that affect the performance. The quality is essentially perfect for the most part. The only minor issues I have is there are a couple frayed stitches on the outside on the edge stitching of the mouse pad. It doesn't look like it's loose threading. It just looks like it's extra threading from the stitching process that wasn't cut off properly so it's not fraying it's just like loose stitches it hasn't gotten worse over my time of testing which is nice to see but it is a small issue again it's not going to affect performance but from like an aesthetic standpoint i guess it can be minorly concerning again i believe i do have a first batch unit or a pre-production unit so this is probably not going to be an issue on the future versions but i did want to mention there is some small inconsistencies with the edge stitching but nothing that's going to affect the performance the rest of the pad is incredibly well qc'd it feels very 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 solid overall aside from a couple frayed stitches on the edges. All right, now the Neptune is using a custom Japanese foam base that Lethal Gaming Air has moved on to all their new pads. As I've said many times before, I'd much rather see a well-performing rubber base over Poron, because in my opinion, Poron bases are just super mid. So I'm very, very happy to see a very good quality rubber base here on the Neptune. Now the rubber base on the Neptune operates very similar to the other rubber bases we've seen on other pads. However, it's very aerated. The foam doesn't have a lot of firmness, meaning that it's quite squishy. Now this kind of aerated squishy foam that makes up the base of the Neptune is what gives this Neptune its overall softness, which again is a very unique thing to see on a speed pad that does have a lot of cool implementations into performance on top of that the base also does perform extremely well as well it does rely on surface pressure to anchor itself so it does rely on an arm or a hand kind of holding it into place if there's nothing on top of the pad you can push the pad around with minimal pressure but as long as there's something on top of the pad it's not going to go anywhere across all of my testing with fingertip claw and palm grip i had no issues with the pad slipping at any point during use which is really nice to see so overall it is just a very very well performing base it has some really cool effects onto the actual performance of the pad itself due to its kind of aerated squishy nature all right 
right, I also wanted to talk about the edge stitching. Now, overall, the edge stitching is very solid. It is just ever so slightly above the three millimeter surface of the Neptune. Not enough where you'll feel any additional drag of moving your arm across it, but it is just an ever so slight difference. Overall, the edge stitching is very solid. The only issues, as I mentioned before, and when I talked about build quality and QC, is there are some frayed stitches, but again, I have a pre-production or a first batch unit. This most likely will not be on future batches of the Neptune, but overall, the edge stitching is very consistent. It hasn't frayed over use. It's just a very, very solid edge stitching. All right, now I also wanted to talk about arm sleeve usage. Now I tested all of my arm sleeves, my Focus Pro sleeve, Pulsar ES sleeve, and Skypad sleeve, and they all worked perfectly fine in the Neptune because the edge stitching is so small. And again, the pad is very thin. There's not a lot of additional drag moving your arm up and down across the pad. And since the surfacing of the pad is a very fast, tight stitch pad, you don't have any issues with the fabric of the arm sleeve kind of fighting against the surfacing of the mouse pad. It was a very good experience. Overall, no problems across all of my arm sleeves. It's a very arm sleeve compatible pad. Now, of course, you can use the Neptune without an arm sleeve. I had no issues with using it with bare arm. It just worked completely fine. I just prefer wearing an arm sleeve for the most case, but you can use this mouse pad completely fine without an arm sleeve if you wanted to. Now, I forgot to talk about this one in my unboxing video. I, I don't know why I completely forgot to mention this, but this mouse pad initially had an extremely strong chemical smell from it. I'm assuming it came from the base, but it could also be from the dyeing on the surface layer. But this was a very, very smelly pad, like nauseatingly high. Now, again, this is a pre-production first batch unit that has not been sitting in stock for a very long time, so did not have the time to air out. I ended up having to leave my mouse pad outside on a clothesline for like four days to get a lot of the smell to go away. It does still have a very slight smell, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was when you first got it. This most likely will not be an issue on future pads, but just know if your pad does have a little bit of a smell out of the box, just hang it outside for a day or so and the smell issue should go away completely. Alrighty, let's talk final thoughts here. Overall, the Neptune is definitely probably the weirdest speed pad I think I've ever used. Again, I'm not really someone who really likes speed pads, but the Neptune definitely kind of changed my opinion on them. It's really unique to have a very fast surface pad with the control variability you'd find on like a control pad. Well, it's a lot lesser of a scale than the control variability you can get on the GSR2 or the Infinity Mice pads. It is still there. So it does make this pad very, very unique because it does have the aspects of a speed pad, but also has the aspects of a control pad in some regards, just because you can press into it to get a little more control. So it's a very, very unique pad. I, despite not really liking speed pads, actually found myself using this pad quite a bit, which I really didn't expect. And despite these minor problems with the edge stitching being a little frayed, the smell of the pad out of the box, and the non-compatibility with some dots gauge, which is kind of expected with a softer pad like this. This pad did perform exceptionally well and really did surprise me. But that is going to be everything for my review of the Lethal Gaming Gear Neptune. Again, a very quirky, but very cool speed pad that will definitely be staying in the rotation for quite a while because I don't really think there's anything else on the market quite like this. If you want to learn more about the Neptune, I will have a non-affiliate link down in the video description. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, you can become a member here over on YouTube. It's $2 a month and you can support everything going on here in the channel and you get your name at the end credits of every video as kind of a shout out section. So if you'd like to support the channel, that's the best way to do so is become a channel member. But that is going to be everything for today. Thank you very much again for watching my review of the Lethal Gaming Gear Neptune. Thank you very much again to Lethal Gaming Gear for sending stuff for me to take a look at, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.